Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Beautiful Monday morning. Let's tell you what happened today in the year 2018. He is one of the most popular black comedians of all time. And if you remember um, growing up in the 90s, you must have enjoyed uh, programs like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and The Bill Cosby Show. It was on this day in 2018 that Bill Cosby was found guilty of sexual assault. He's an American comedian, and of course, uh, he had been a subject of publicized uh, sexual assault allegations and was on this day convicted of aggra um, aggravated incident uh, of assault in 2018. He has been found guilty of three counts so far of sexual assault, each of which carries a potential 10 years in prison. He um, has also been accused by numerous women of rape, drug-facilitated sexual assault, sexual battery, child sexual abuse, and sexual misconduct. Cosby, over, you know, in the last couple of years, has maintained his innocence and repeatedly denied the allegations made against him. He has also been on trial for drugging and assaulting an ex-basketball player, Andrea Costand, in 2004. If you remember also, at the start of the trial in Pennsylvania, it was revealed that Cosby had paid Ms. Costand almost $3.4 million in civil settlement in 2006. Some of his accusers were present in court during the trial, and of course, uh, they all cried as the guilty verdict was returned. Um, this was also one of the, you know, the big ones that started a Me Too movement back then. Uh, that year was really, really huge on um, revelations concerning sex sexual assault and, um, 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 and all of that that had happened many years ago. Kevin Spacey was also one of the people uh, that, um, um, was convicted. Um, what's his name now? The movie producer who's, you know, still going in and out of jail. Um, also learned a little bit from Nigerian politicians when they're being accused, fainting in court and, and going to court with us. It was a stretcher. I can't remember his name now. Um, was also one of the people, you know, who was, you know, uh, um, convicted as a result of the Me Too movement and the revelations from the Me Too movement um, in 2018, 2017, and 2018. You know, it, it, it was huge. Bill Cosby, for a lot of people, there were conspiracy theories that, oh, it was just, you know, plots to bring the black man down. Um, he had reached the peak of his, his career and there were, uh, you know, forces that were trying to bring him down and that's why these allegations came up but you know there was so many of all these revelations and at some point everyone just had to re you know realize and agree that now nah, this isn't anybody trying to bring anybody down he had committed crimes in the past and it was time for him to pay for those crimes um, and it also is it's um, at that time it also showed a lot of what we call um, unlearning that needed to be done with what we saw as normal in the 80s so some of the things, not even as bad as, you know, assaulting and drugging some of these women um, and, they, you know, sexually, you know, assaulting them. Some of the things that we even used to say that were normal back then, you know, um, some of the, the things that we used to do, not me now, but, you know, the world used to do and say as normal back then in the 80s and in the 90s. In, you know, 2018, where, of course, obviously now, you know, seem to be, you know, assault. Maybe it was normal back then, but it's no, we're no longer in that era. We're no longer in that space. And so the Me Too movement made a lot of people more aware of what assault is and the, the unsafe environment that they had put a lot of, you know, of women back then in the 80s and in the 90s and, of course, um, you know, over time. So it was a great period. Um, unfortunately, or well, unfortunately, you know, some of these people like Bill Cosby, like Kevin Spacey, um, had to, you know, um, go to jail for, for them. Hmm. And it just reminds me of the story I'm sharing for today in history. You know, we're talking about, you know, how the long arm of the law actually caught up with people who, you know, dared to commit crimes. You know, this guy, we're talking about somebody in the U.S. who was a police officer. You know, he basically had committed rape. He had basically assaulted people. And for many years, he went, you know, went scot-free. The, 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 uh, the law, they didn't catch him. Nobody could catch him because nobody could identify that he was responsible for those crimes. But when eventually, you know, he was caught, he was uh, sentenced in, arrested in 2018 and, uh, of course, sentenced to jail in the year 2020. So this particular story here is of uh, uh, James, Joseph James D'Angelo Jr., you know, he was called the Golden State Killer. He had committed 13 murders, committed 50 rapes, and 120 burglaries within 13 years. I mean, this guy basically had done a lot of damage, a lot of evil. And uh, how did he get caught? Basically, these crimes are committed many years ago, about 40 years ago. But uh, 
the police had been trying to investigate, but they never knew that all these different crimes, I told you about 50 murders, 13 rapes, they didn't know that it was the same crime. I mean, take a look at the picture there. That, that was him younger committing all those crimes. And many years later, you know, nobody was able to pinpoint that all these crimes that were happening in the U.S. was by the same person. You know, whenever each crime was committed, they would call it by, you know, give the, the attacker a certain name yeah. based on the experiences that the, you know, victim had shared. But the, the police, you know, in the U.S. set up a fake DNA profile. They sent it to a DNA matching uh, uh, company, you know, saying they want to be matched, looking for... What they used was um, they took um, DNA evidence from one of the people who had been raped and, you know, used it to set up a profile saying they want to look for their relative, their long-lost relative. And many years later, you know, maybe he or his family trying to, you know, do up a DNA match and testing and all of that. And that's how the police was alerted, you know, that this is a relative. And that's how they swooped in and found... This is the same person who has committed 13 rapes and 50 murders over the past years. And so it just shows how, you know, committed really, how consistent really, you know, the police in some parts of the world, in some countries, and how much they would take their time, get invested in a case just so they can persecute someone and basically bring justice to a matter. Mm -hmm. But here, you know, we've talked about this many times on the show. You go and say you've been raped and the police will tell you that you're not happy that someone found you attractive. Yeah, so it's, you know, pretty matter. much the same thing with the with the Bill Cosby case. Yes. Um, um, we, we, our attitude to, towards some of the oldest crimes are entirely different here. Um, Bill Cosby's crimes are from, you know, 80s, you know, early 90s. And, and, and in 2018, there was still um, enough, you know, to, um, you know, convict him. Um, rape is one of the hardest things to prove. Sexual sure. assault is also one of the hardest things to prove, you know, if there's no clear cut evidence and, or video cameras and some of all of that. Um, but they have a system there that is able to assist the victims to be able to share their stories and to also be able to assist the victims, uh, um, um, assist the case basically to come to light and of course people to be found guilty. Uh, we have a lot of work that we need to do here in Nigeria. Um, our forensic investigation almost doesn't exist here in Nigeria um, either. I don't think any crime that was committed in 1980 would have DNA evidence in, you know, in today's world here in Nigeria. And so there's so much that we, that we lack. Um, but, you know, seeking, you know, that level of investigation in Nigeria is, is which would you're looking for a unicorn or, or a flying elephant. Um, we need to at least, we, there's so much work that needs to be done to improve our criminal justice system and our policing system and all of that before we get to that level. Um, and I hope that at some point, you know, we're also going to move away from saying that people were young and naive when they committed these crimes. Because I'm sure if Bill Cosby was in, in Nigeria and he was, you know, a minister, he probably would have been forgiven and said that he was naive. And, yes, you know, he was that. young when and he did yeah, that. <laughs> let's let him go. Um, but that's what we're sharing with you today. The, uh, I think it was called the Golden State Killer. Yes. Um, and of course, uh, Bill Cosby in 2018, he was found guilty of sexual assault. Today in history, 26th of April. Stay with us. Our first major conversation comes up next after this short break.